Oh, it's gone. Okay. Right, so um, I'm not going to be introducing, I'm going to introduce myself and, and um, Sage. I'll introduce Alistair, who is. Uh, what's your official title? I count as fish chef and uh, I chef. Um, yep, and, um, and you've got a bit of responsibility for sustainability. Sustainability. And you'd like a bit more, yeah. I, I <laughs> a bit more time. Be, I will be putting um, Forward. That's great, isn't it? It's good to have people on side, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so while I've gone and looked at a few things I said um, about my passion, and at the moment one of my passions is trying to not use plastic. So I'm trying not to use it in my everyday life, and um, for obvious reasons. You know, you know, why is it not moving? Oh, excuse me. Uh -huh. Okay. Help somebody, why is it not going? Oh, it's okay. Okay. All right, so I'm not going to go everything about waste, but as you probably know, there's heaps of different sorts of waste household hazardous waste, construction and demolition debris, which I'm worried about at the university. So I think we're going to be demolishing quite a few buildings and constructing a few others. Then industrial and commercial waste, and we probably have a bit of that. Even fluorescent and various other sorts of lamps around here. Medical waste, which is a real issue for obviously hospitals and some stuff. Electronic equipment, again, is a, another issue for university and everybody these days. And used oil, I know the various service stations, some are pretty good at recycling that and some are not. Okay, you probably know all about these sorts of awful pictures. Um, <laughs> there's the issue, what's happening to our plastic. A lot of the other stuff is just as bad, but the plastic is the thing that tends to last longer. And obviously the one at the top left is, is showing what happens when landfills are like washed out. I mean, we're putting all these landfills from 20, 30, 40 years ago on the coast. That's going to be getting worse and worse and worse. And as you know, it's all on the beaches. Even uninhabited islands have plastic on their beaches. That's actually the Fox landfill, river landfill. Someone who actually helped there said to me, I'm never ever going to have those little wee butter cartons and things that they have at hotels. Because it was it was full of those. Of course, they're a tourist area, isn't it? I went to a seminar a week or two ago about somebody who was on one of these ocean ships that goes around the ocean sampling the seawater. They'd been around all the oceans in the world. Every time they sampled, a smallish sort of, I don't know, square metery stuff. They got it's a petri dish, that sort of waste just floating in the water, not counted what's on the bottom and sinking. All right, so this is pretty terrible, isn't it? Okay, so plastics. I should actually say, of course, I was born before plastics were being used. Because I'm so old. Anyway, I'll talk about that later, perhaps. So plastics, basically, they don't degrade. They break up into smaller and smaller pieces. They do harm humans and wildlife, and plastics contain plasticizers, which act as hormone estrogen, that is mimics. Sorry, guys, it's worse for you than it is for us. Um, so that affects males, reduce your sperm count, and actually male animals and male fish and everything else. Yeah. And these are the various nasty things. If you see any, any of those words, or any something you buy, it's not so good. Um, and phthalates and BPA are shown to affect the reproduction in all standard animal groups, including humans, as well as possibly a range of other things, including asthma and breast cancer and everything else. But there's not quite such a much evidence for some of those. My pet thing is clothes. Okay, I have decided not to buy any new clothes. Okay, so my scarf. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. My blouse, my t-shirt, my jeans, all came for second hand shops. Yeah. The scarf and the blouse and the t-shirt cost me five dollars from the little community for second hand shop in Holby. And the jeans cost slightly more from the other slightly more expensive second hand shop. I actually have only had one thing, I'm sure I brought it with me actually. One thing no. One thing I actually failed on, one thing in the whole year I bought new, I saw this ad for WWF selling a t-shirt saying um, every metre of ocean has so many bits of plastic in it, and I bought it. And I thought, why am I buying that? How stupid. It shows how advertisers can get to you. They knew how to get to me. <laughs> so, even washing your clothes, all those little microfibers from polyester and whatever, they're actually going through the water system and ending up in wildlife on the ocean floor. 
Anyway, I don't know whether you say don't wash your clothes or you just choose other clothes to, to wash or water. You can get special bags to put them in, but I don't know what the answer is to that. So, clothing is actually an issue. You already know, especially young people, people buy clothes and the next year is another fashion. And so there's huge amounts of clothing every year. I mean, you know, I always give mine to the second-hand shop or you know, my daughter's quite often or whatever. Just but, shop, you know, like clothes don't actually last that long. Well, that's right. Um, They're even made to last, aren't they? You've got to turn them up, you know, like socks and things like that. And yes. I was trying to turn them over all the time. And even if you spend the money on trying to get a decent pair of warm or something, that yes. they will last, it doesn't. Exactly. And so they, I think they, it's built in obsolescence, as they say, don't they? That's one of the problems. Mm. Uh, Just by the society. Oh, it's terrible. And it, if you look at any of your labels, even if it's sort of like wool or cotton, often it'll have synthetic in there as well. And of course, not even mentioning the other impacts, like the nasty, really nasty chemical dyes they use, which often goes into all the rivers and the waters and, and so on. I don't know, I missed out a bottle of that. I wonder why that's happened. Sorry about that. Okay, so that's some of the negative stuff. What can we do? I'm so really talking what I do. I go like bulk buy for farmers markets, all the naked section, which is the ones without the plastic on fruit and veggies and stuff. I grow my own food, as much as I have time to do, and I make my own products. Why buy all those containers when you can use baking soda and vinegar mm. and buy it in bulk from bin in? You take your own containers, mm. they'll fill them up, they weigh them, fill them up, etc. My biggest issue is bread bags. I actually make mm. all my own bread. My husband likes sliced bread. We keep collecting all these jolly bread bags. Yogurt, yogurt to use, you make your own, use beer out. Now this is an article about it possibly being contaminated, so you have to make sure you can't boil it or anything. You have to wipe it clean. Okay. But I actually make make little wee covers out of some spear bits of material with an elastic round. That's all you need to do. But anyway, you can only do this, it's, it's quite good, it fits over things. Um tea bags, you know about tea bags actually contain most of them contain little bits of plastic. To use, I say, use leaf type tea, catering. Make a big pot of ordinary tea with leaves in it. Don't use tea bags. It's yeah, this, I really like to go and um, hopefully down the track and get rid of cling film, but it's. Yes, cling it's film. Really I don't use cling film yeah. anymore. Yes, it's really, really bad. Yes, you have to work on it. Trouble is with. Yes, when you're catering, uh, it's always hard because of all the health and safety things. But I noticed that the Lincoln Pantry in Lincoln are trying to get rid of all those sorts of things and they've worked out ways around a lot of the stuff. So talk to them. I've got a, a phone number for, for them. So, anyway, if you have to buy clothes, try and buy natural fibres. Even so, of course, organic, organic cotton is a real issue. So you try and buy organic if you can, so the way it's produced is a bit of an issue. Wool's good. If you don't like me, you're going to with wool, but wool is the best, most sustainable fibre that you can use. Okay, so 2018, a peer-reviewed journal, Science Advances. The first global analysis of all the plastics ever made and their fate. I don't know how accurate it was, but it's obviously a snapshot. Of the 8.3 billion metric tons which have been produced, 6.3 billion metric tons has become plastic waste, and only 9% has been recycled. Most of it's in landfills or whatever, and most of it's in the ocean. I actually left this as a, as a link, by the way, so if it does, <coughs> if you want to like the PDF, or you might be able to go to that link, but anyway. We consume 31 kilograms of plastic packaging every year. We, only, we actually don't buy too bad, about 18%, but that's us putting it in the recycling bin. How much of that actually gets recycled is probably not very much. So that's really a false figure, I think. Do you want plastic with your teeth? What about the tea bags? Uh, and um, I actually think recycling is a bit of a myth. Because basically, we think it's being recycled and it isn't. Okay, well, Greenpeace have been a big thing about this last year. And even councils, often they're not collecting some of those types of plastic. And even if they do, they're not being recycled. Indonesia, just recently, when was that? Yesterday or day before, they're sending back all this contaminated waste to New Zealand. Well done, them. Why should we dump it on them? We should do something about it. Okay, so the best solution is reduce it at source. Okay, plastic pens, although I'm actually organising a recycling drop-off for plastic pens, but 
I'll just show you this. This is actually really, really useful. <laughs> it's a pencil. You can use pens made of bamboo, but there's a little bit of metal and a little bit of plastic in it. <laughs> Sorry to pull it out. <laughs> um, toothbrushes. Toothbrushes. You can recycle. Well, I'm a bit worried about this. It's a recycling thing down at the um, bottom of Forbes, but I haven't discovered yet what they are doing with all the toothpaste mm -hmm. tubes mm -hmm. and the toothpaste brushes. Are they actually really recycling them? Oh, you right. These you can get. There's a new world in Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. The and the farm you see as well. Yeah, so lots of brands of them, but this one is actually from New World in Lincoln. Do you have a question? No, no, I was just wondering, um, uh, I think Mandy, Mandy, Mandy Buller. Mandy Buller is the one organising the things, yes, because I discovered that when I tried to organise it. Yes. Just welcome. Yep. They sell toothpaste tablets now. Yes. Right, I'll talk a bit more about toothpaste. Okay, this is toothpaste. So when I was a kid, well, I've mentioned how old I am, when I was a kid we had the little wee um, like metal tins and it was actually a paste, it was like, you know, it wasn't like liquidy stuff. And of course it was very unhygienic, you just put your brush in and cleaned your teeth. Okay, this is probably the next best thing, and this is from the Whole Foods, is it called? Anyway, in Rickerton Road, and they're working on like reusing these jars. Alright, so that actually is a really good way of buying toothpaste, or you can make your own, of course, people do. Um, you can get a similar deodorant in jars, which they reuse. Um, so anyway, all of these things, if, you, if you've got time, the real trouble is time, you know, have you got time for all these things? And I said, I lived most of my life without plastics and without waste when I was young, because when I was born, I was born actually in England, it was actually the end of the Second World War, and of course everyone had to be really careful in those days. And my mum was probably the original environmentalist. She ironed all the wrapping paper, she collected all the string, and she re unpicked jerseys and re knitted them, and everything, you nodding your head, you probably know what it's like. And there, just, there wasn't plastic, we didn't have plastic. I was going to show you some metal lunch boxes you can buy, but I must have lent them to someone to show somebody else, and I haven't got them back, which is really annoying. Uh, anyway, so the trouble is now that plastic pervades everywhere, and it's much harder, or well, like you mentioned with cling film, but often think back how did we use to manage, you know, but people did. Okay, so there's a few things I do as well. I mean, when I left there, I got sick of all these ice cream, plastic ice cream containers. Again, I actually make my own ice cream, but it's because I can't have sugar, and I make it sugar-free. My husband eats ice cream all the time. So I've now found one that's in a a cardboard box, a little bit more expensive, so that's a new world here, a new world. Um, as I said, I've got a bin in, it's probably not been in, but it's a bit like that. I take all my own containers, it's glass if I can, but some of them are actually plastic boxes, but they weigh them and then you put all the stuff in, which is really, really fantastic, and it's a lot cheaper. Um, I even take my pick, <coughs> Peanut butter jar is lovely, but I make get my own done now, which is just as good. And I have fresh peanuts, you give them a jar as they wait, and we'll wait on the bottom there. And they fill it up with whatever sort of peanut butter you like, crunchy or whatever. And when I get it home, I just put a little bit of olive oil on the top just to keep it nice and moist, which is the only thing that's not quite right. That's perfect for me. Um, actually, there's a picture of the metal lunch boxes. Uh, what else? Yeah, um, quite a few things really. Like milk. One of my milk, I mean, milk was a real hassle. I mean, talking about trying to get milk bottles in at the university. I actually get quite a lot of my milk actually from the um, Aylesbury Dairy, which is on what I had to Darfield once a week. I just drop off there and get a few bottles of that. And uh, it is a raw though. Uh, this is the much cheapest way to build, buy it, just to compare with buying it in the supermarket or anywhere else. Is it available pasteurised? No, it's not pasteurised. No, yes, they've been some. And there is a way I knew. Um, farm, so it's from a farm. This is from a farm, direct from a farm. Yeah. And there are other farms that have their own pasteurising now. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't. Is that yes, yes. the Rome one. I sent that to you. Yeah, so it has to be pasteurised. Yeah. 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 So um, Rome, I saw Rome in yesterday. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know they're delivering. These guys yeah. also deliver, but they're more. Yes. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. pass you on next info, haven't I? Yeah, we're happy to read on that. We're happy to have a conversation about that as well. Yes. We're looking to our options. Oh, good. So well, we've got a lot of people on. But I don't want that to be a conversation. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to actually have to be responsible with what you do with the waste at the end. And that will probably make a big difference. It's probably why the TerraCycle people are getting sponsorship from Colgate, for example, mm -hmm. to recycle tubes of toothpaste and toothbrushes. But my question, as I mentioned, is what is happening to that? Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Okay, so what's happening at Lincoln University at the moment, this is because Paul Dryden couldn't be here. <coughs> so, <coughs> in the moment, the cleaners move the bins from the offices and the entrance of willy bins outside the buildings, and the, then the facilities management team take them to the Lincoln University rubbish dump. And I thought, oh, rubbish dump doesn't sound too good, but that's actually a historic name. It used to be a real rubbish dump, because I remember that's where people who worked at the university took their rubbish. I've been out there and had a look, and it's actually got a whole lot of different bins, and they do take it there and they do sort it into the different bins, including one big pile, I presume, for composting. All right, so they are dealing with that pretty well. Um, what yes? happens with the, um, I mean, you know, the, the, I'm from the Gregory, you know, <laughs> most people there, you know, seem to be under confused there, so what's recyclable and what isn't, and, and I, I always worry that they, uh, you know, that they put so much you know, stuff that has to go into the landfill, then that, that would, people would sort of say, one of the problems is if you put something in the recycling bin that can contaminate yeah, yeah, it and yeah, the whole bin goes to landfill. Well, well, so that's one of the things I think we really need to put pressure on. I'm going well, to ask... Well, we actually need an education system. Mm -hmm. yeah. we don't. I mean, we're supposed we've got intelligent people, but yeah, I see coming... People the real trouble is noise. that the message is coming from the people recycling or whatever, collecting are yes, not exactly. consistent. And the reason for that is, of course, we used to send it all overseas, mm -hmm. thinking it was being dealt with. Now we can't. And now we've got to think, well, actually, where is it going? Is it being made into fence posts, which is some of the things. But how many fence posts are we going to make? And but Anyway, so what we're going to do in a minute, I'm actually going to pass a, um, a bit of paper around for everybody to write down your questions all your suggestions or just comments well, and we'll collect all those up and that's yeah. one of the things for the yeah. university. Have you ever been around the back of the uh, works and services there where they have the skip? <laughs> You'd be surprised what you're chucking there. There's no, no discrimination at all. It's terrible, between. isn't it? There's a, a, lot of wood, a lot of wood actually ends up in there because yes. nobody could be, I mean, it could be somebody's fire at yes. worst, but I mean... So There's next time you next time you say, you you take a photo and email it to me. Yeah, <laughs> that would be really helpful. Okay, so I'm sorry, I, 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 I'm sorry, Sue Sue Jarvis. Sue, Sue Jarvis. Sue Jarvis. So it's just Sue dot Jarvis yeah, at Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So what are we doing here apart from those basic things? Is this this is for the TerraCycle people, and. Um, What's well, already been arranged, which I hadn't realised because I was trying to do the pens, is actually already the oral care things in the coffee pods, and they're down at the bottom of Forbes so as you go in towards the grounded cafe. So you can take the things in there. I am trying to find out what they do with them, because I don't know what's happening. It could just be them feeling good. Yes, we're doing the recycling. We'll collect all their products. Mm, but then, no, no, we're getting packed up and sent somewhere. I know. I mm. the Not to Indonesia, I hope. No, 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 no. I, I trust them. <laughs> Have you got any information? I, so that would be... I haven't got the information. Yeah. I, I've talked about this one and I think they go, they go off to America or some crazy place. Was, that doesn't sound very good. Just, I mean, okay. I don't quite know that. No. They were going to Make your own toothpaste or buy this much, much, yeah. much more sustainable. Um, okay, so there's lots of things there. Now, um, Sage, I think it was Lynn Roberts, who actually did a, a survey with students about what's happening in the halls. So they chose 24 <coughs> hours of waste from the three of the halls and they actually weighed and sorted it and placed it in the hopefully right bins and then weighed again. So lots of cannon bottles and lots of pizza bo boxes. We have discussions about pizza boxes at the moment, much in the wrong bin. You can't put pizza boxes that are contaminated with food in the recycling bin. It contaminates the whole bin. The moment it has to go in with the landfill, but they're working on having an alternative place to put that because it could be composted. It could go in with green waste. I see there's one small bin for food um, green waste out between that old building is half demolished and um, the back of the Stuart or front of the Stuart lecture theatres is in with there's three bins and one's a food waste mm -hmm. bin. But I don't know exactly if the zoom that gets composted, I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Alistair. Or any more questions on that bit? Then I'll pass it to Alistair. Alistair lives on the 
pizza boxes are often not contaminated. So That's right, you can separate them. Yes, people like me, and, and I know Kirsty was looking into having pizza boxes that had a little bit of paper in, some of the pizza goes on a bit of paper, mm -hmm. so then all the bit that's contaminated is one bit of paper, mm -hmm. which would be good. Okay, we'll just pass on to Alistair, who's going to tell us a little bit more about Lincoln University Catering. You might come up with here. Yep. Hi, I'm Alistair from Catering. Um, how's it all going? Good. I um, just want to talk today about what we're up to in Catering. Um, so the first one, we were looking at our milk bottles, which is a, ma well, it's a major issue as far as um, <coughs> we're all concerned. 28,000 plastic milk bottles a year. Um, so we have talked with um, our supplier um, because they were, and they're going to be sent back to bid food, which is, um, and they will be sent to the correct place to be manufactured into fence posts. Only as a, I think, um, not as a long term thing, um, until a viable um, option becomes available so that we can replace those with permanently. We're looking at glass milk bottles, possibly. It's just the price of the milk at the moment until um, one of our major suppliers comes online. Or possibly um, Otago University were um, developing a milk keg idea. Um, but the problem for us is, is would be um, the installation of that and it, it runs like um, like what beer lines do to, to the keg and things, to your tap. It's cleaning those, all of that sort of thing. So we just need to come across. We need to work our way through um, the process with that one. It's not. I don't, we're, we're really motivated to do something about it, though. But it, I can see it's just going to be a work in progress, unfortunately. We'll get there. Um, the yogurt making machines. So we, um, the yogurt containers um, that we were getting in weren't recyclable plastic. Um, so we've introduced um, yogurt making machines, and we've eliminated two thousand plastic containers there at least a year. So that's one area that we've um, succeeded in. It's um, not easy to actually get things happening, but we're getting there. Um, looking into alternative small bottles is what I've talked about. Um, and then our PCUs, which are our little portion control units. So you little peanut butter and Vegemite and um, margarine ones. Okay, so we're just uh, using um, bowls now on our tables um, for our margarine and so forth. And um, so that was 28, around about 28,000 of those a year as well. So that's huge actually, as far as plastic production is concerned. Um, so our pig bins, all our foods go to a farm, all our food scraps are going to a farmer. We have um, a dedicated area for that. Um, also, um, changes to grounded cafe with the coffee cups and using recyclable ones and um, recyclable food containers possibly down the track. Um, and then just the general education program, um, I want to educate our staff better with our recycling. Um, it's like what we talked about, was talked about before. Um, we, have, we have talked about them and I mean, I check them every single day, um, but it's, you still get the odd person that um, will put milk bottles into the um, containers not washed and that sort of thing or in the wrong containers and it's just yeah it's an ongoing thing and it's just something that I've got to keep at. Sorry, excuse me Alice, I'll, I'll read this and this I'll, I'll email you so I'll still consider it when it's oh, off. Is it, what, where are you? Yeah, yeah I don't think I've, I've just been kind of dismayed by well lack of what we do there. It's kind of really of farmers, the councils, yeah. it's like not organised farmers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll email you anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Liv. No worries. I'm, I'm quite interested in the subject here. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, I think that's it. Is it? Oh, and then we want to put one. Well, we're at, oh, there's a question there. Book um, shop. Is there provision to actually, I know, uh, moving towards recycled cups and plates and things like that in, in grounded is a step forward, but I still think it's it's still a treat. Um, I, when I go there, I bring my own cup. And yeah. the other day, I brought my own plates, and they were like, oh, that's a good idea. And I'm just thinking, think about in terms of return customers. So if you charge them a dollar, for per plate and per cup, 
and then they return it to get their money back. Yeah. Or you know. This is something that's this yeah. is something that Sue's raised with me, and that's um, something that um, I'll, I will definitely look into. I've just got to speak to my department head about that and getting them to look at introducing it. Yeah, and the other thing is uh, having a cheaper price if you bring your own containers. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Or so then you don't have to wash them. Or even the coffee cups that you have, yes. um, the ones that you can use over and over again. I've got one at home. Mm. Um, there's no there's no reason for not using those exactly. as well. I mean, even if we go to eco shop. Seriously, students will have quite a bit of fun, and if you let them bring their own cup and you couldn't even leave it there, they're like, oh yeah, that's my dinosaur cup. Yeah, sometimes you have like a board with hooks on, mm -hmm. and then yeah, it's like, like that, and maybe you wash your own cup, yes. and that's out of your you know, I just wash your own cup before you actually go to the cafe. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I do with my local cafe. So I just take mine down, rinse it out, and they go, oh, you're good. And I go, well, everyone should be doing it. Um, we shouldn't expect you guys to have to wash it out yeah. for us. Yeah. They don't yeah. have time. And there's a the same thing down there anyway. So yeah. to me, it's just like... food court has on plates. And then they collect it later on and wash it. We do have recyclable uh, takeaway containers and that sort of thing as well. But the thing with it is, is that how, is it really is it really recyclable and does it break down? And um, we've done quite a bit of I've done a fair bit of research into this sort of thing, and it really doesn't it doesn't do what they say. And um, like I even looked at bio bags, but yeah. it's not happening. Yeah. It's um, much better if people can bring their own yeah. like little containers to put their food in if they want to take it away. It's just encouraging them. Isn't it? It is. Well, no, they just they, they brought it in here now. Yeah. They they should you collect your dinner, make a this in your meat and your no, your fish. The Lincoln they just started it and count down the monster. Yes, you just bring your clean container and you can put them in there instead. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. yep. I would just suggest um, if your manager is like, well, health and safety, just tell them. We won't be selling any sushi because there's not going to be any that doesn't have plastic in it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're looking at like a much bigger issue than health and safety. Mm -hmm. We are. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Some of the you know some of the wrapping that I see at work and um, some of the packaging is just it's just intense. And it, yeah. it, like now every time I see a plastic bag, it just does my head inside. Yeah. Um, and especially one the other like one product in particular was like two actual plastic liners, mm -hmm. one inside the other. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going, it's just so unnecessary. Um, and we, I managed to get the, the it's just the educational thing um, in my department, I think, as well. Um, one thing I was on about was, because we get our large um, meat boxes in, and we get the, and they're in a blue plastic strapping, it's horrible stuff. It's like a fibrous stuff that they, you probably know it. And, um, well, it can be recycled, apparently, and it was going into the uh, landfill bins. Mm. So we've managed to sort that out as well. We, now we have a dedicated bin for that, mm -hmm. so that's kept separate. So we're just trying to get everything sorted out as best as we can in there, mm -hmm. you know. Are you able to put some pressure on, is it Big Food, you know, whoever's delivering it? Because at the end of the day, you're, the, you're their customer. Mm. So if well, you want them to stop putting, you know, double plastic, blah, 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 are you saying, look, we're not going to buy this anymore to put some I want, I, I, this, there's, um, we get a lot of our meat. The problem, the thing that's hard to do, hard to get rid of, is that um, the help from, it goes back to this health and safety thing again. But if we get our say diced um, beef in, say we get I don't know 100 kilos of that, and just as an example, um, it has to be in something that where it's, the blood's not going to leach out, um, and so they'll have to be. It has to be by regulation at the moment in a vacuum pack. Um, but then the other thing I've got an issue with is that they'll supply that in a crate. But then they'll have a plastic liner in that crate, mm -hmm. and then they'll have the plastic bag in that crate. So I want to try to get rid of that plastic liner, at least that's something. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> until an alternative to that, mm -hmm. um, the only way I can see it is, is if they put them in possibly in plastic bins that are sealed that could be reused, yeah. like washed and reused and taken away possibly, yeah. as a way of getting around all of that um, vacuum packing. Mm -hmm. You know? Are you able to? I mean, are they the ones doing it? Is it we're, we're, I've someone? I've spoken to my to my um to my manager, and um I, I mean every week I put pressure on. So um basically I'll be doing it again on Thursday. Good. <laughs> good um, good. but yeah, and and I'm going to be talking about. Now I'll, I'll push him. Yeah. Pretty good. Well, just I mean he's really he's he's really 
he's really keen. He's like, like he's actually awesome, like to work with, and and we get on really, really well. It's just the companies changing their their procedures, you know. That that that's what we've got to try to to try to do. And I think everybody actually needs to come on board with it, not just yeah. say Lincoln University, but yeah. everybody needs to come on well, come on board. Just start buying that. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. that's how you put pressure on them, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Proposals are in the plastic bags, and I've gone to them and said, "Look, I'm not buying them anymore." Mm -hmm. I was just, you know, I was just, uh, just driving to work today and just thinking about, you know, like with the emissions and things and all that sort of thing as well, you know. That's right. We haven't mentioned that, but of course, it more, every time you make plastic, you're producing emissions anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Friends of mine have just bought an eco car, like a battery operated car, yeah. mm -hmm. like fully battery operated. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed with it, actually. Mm -hmm. Awesome idea. Mm -hmm. I've got a hybrid, but my next one's going to be electric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the next car's a bike. Could be. Might have to a fire the country for that. Oh, we have the we charging will. stations here, don't we? So, yes. Yeah. So, free, free power. Yeah. 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 Why wouldn't you? So I've got the same probably do now. It's going to continue the discussion. But if you like that bit of paper I'm passing around, what we really want is your suggestions and comments. But some, you know, your good ideas would really help. And things you would like to see changed. So then we can collect it all together and say, hey, this is what this group thought. And um, you know, even ideas for others still what they you know, would surprise some, but put that in writing if you can, because that's better for you. It's always, you know, areas you can yes. improve on. Yeah. Mm. Kirsty, sort of a question for you. Um, I was wondering, like, we have this enormous rate of group of students in ground every day. Every day that students are here, there's a huge number of them in ground. Is it possible to have, you know, like a not there may be a couple of areas that are dedicated to how to recycle, what to recycle, mm. that sort of thing? Yeah, and there, that are aimed at students. Yeah, and I'm just not sure. I know it's, you know. Who would be asked to do that? I don't know. Do you know, Kirsty? I don't know. I think John yeah. asked. Yeah. Asked for asked for the hidden Yeah. I don't know who particularly owns the ground in the area. I think it's a. I know you have to look at from Noosa. Yeah. Um, Jim's got the auction. Yeah, so um, for those that don't know, me, I'm Janelle Polite, so I work um, with student experience. Oh, hi, Janelle. In the custom engagement. Emailed you a few times. Yeah, <laughs> so um, I, the reason I'm kind of here is just to let people know that I can help in that kind of communications, how we can disseminate our information to students, um, especially first years coming through, mm -hmm. and during orientation and the likes. Um, so any ideas like that, um, whether you want to write them down here at the time or feed them through either email me or let Sue know and she can forward them on. Because we're always um, planning that my role is to look at the whole student journey and the types of um, information we're putting on our website, um, the activities we're doing for those students, the emails we're sending them, the work. So um, I can definitely help in that area and come up with solutions mm -hmm. and work with whether it's USA or whether the proper business areas for that sort of communications aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah, because I know it's always a area that doesn't care for what you do and say that. I was going to say because some of these comments are not coming out onto the microphone, I'll just say um, Janelle is the person to contact for about the student experiences or things for the students to know about in the first year or any year, I presume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that would be really good. Um, any other comments or uh, I just have some, several students come to me asking why there's not green things like all over campus. Yes, because the students a year or two ago actually did organise originally one outside the library, which might be the one that's actually now at the moment near Stuart. Um, block there is a green bin there and but they had organized the emptying of it apparently originally but I don't know why we're not having green bins as you say as the default as the fourth bin the default, exactly we should do do you know anything about the green bins because you recycled your organic place a pig farm don't you yes. Yes, that's right. So some some departments have bakashi buckets oh, in their tea rooms. Isn't this mm. one of the things we're going to be discussing at four in the yes. second? Yes, yes. yes. we should do. So is that in the meeting next week? 22nd. So that's your, your waste group. Yep. Can you bring that up then? About yes. the oh, yeah, well, the whole thing is sort of about yeah. that. Good. It's about talking to Paul, and he just 
pretty much wants to know what do we want. Good. And we've just got the, you know, come back with any ideas mm. about, and because it, it all started with the students wanting to recycle pizza boxes. Mm -hmm. That's and, right. Yeah, mm. and just slowly went from there. Brilliant. And so there's some students come in and there's about eight of us now, I think. Mm. Yeah, and we're eating pizzas. Yeah, and um, they've already on to trying to work out the place management, um, making it a business consistent across 